Hi, Alexandra, and thank you very much for joining uh, the stage with me because uh, I know that digital transformation has been, uh, in the last couple of years, and especially in the last year with all the pandemic, uh, a very hot topic. Uh, and I know that telecom has done a fantastic job um, during uh, you know, uh, the last year. So I would like to talk with you a bit about how digital transformation is looking like in telecom. Hey, thanks first for being here, for invitation, and uh, it's a bit unusual being live. <laughs> this is something that we missed during yeah. this pandemic, but on the other side, what transformation brought us is actually possibility to stay connected, to be present, uh, to do our job, to serve our customers into the same level and extent, which was something that have happened prior to pandemic. So, it is quite important, and uh, those times actually showed up that it's even more important to be able to be present regardless to the conditions which are in the external world. Perfect. So, and how did the, uh, you know, tools or what kind of new changes have you uh, introduced in telecom in the last year in order to be a bit more connected to your customers? Uh, except something which we already had before, and this is something which is related to the mm -hmm. offline channel, we are trying now to move a little bit our customers towards online channels and to be present into the same level of quality of services, product, uh, support, uh, sales care, whatever, uh, in, in online channels. So we are present fully on the web. Uh, we introduced uh, some uh, robots, and actually this is also something which Druid helped us to do. Uh, we have introduced chatbots in a couple of various places. So the idea is that we are there for our customers 24 by 7, regardless to the facts where they are. If they have possibility to go to the shop or to call the call center, yes, but what for the ones who are not able to do so? And especially now during the pandemic times when people couldn't leave their houses or they were just not feeling comfortable to do mm -hmm. so, they were able to get all the assistance needed. So it was just an alternative, another channel, so to say? Exactly. It in communicating with, uh, with the customers. We, what we wanted is to provide them the same quality of service regardless to the channel. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the transformation, yeah. let's be honest. <laughs> and frankly, we cannot replace human yes. yet. And but, we're not uh, trying to. And we are not trying to. This is also something that everybody needs to understand. I think our customers are aware of that. But there are some things that, first of all, the customers can do by themselves. So uh, on our side, it's just to educate them how they can do it. So it's not necessary that everything is done by some call center representative. Mm -hmm. There is a lot that they can do it by themselves. And this is why we are helping them on digital channels. Sometimes it's an app, sometimes it's just a web, sometimes it's a chatbot. And there are some things which we do in behind, so the process itself is much faster, much seamless, and the customers can have their problems and solved faster and be a little bit more satisfied and also a bit more happy since they learned something new and they are engaged. Yeah. So you saw a um, much more clear need for self-service in the, the last, uh, let's say, period of time, and you saw it transformed in a way through interacting with the chatbot. Actually, we do. Uh, even though we have planned to do so outside of this pandemic, I think <laughs> none of us was so predictable. But uh, one of the things what we put on telecom agenda is to do the digital transformation. Okay. So to be able, as I said, to be present everywhere at any time. And the uh, tools which can help us there are mainly digital tools. Mm -hmm. So we have decided to deploy chatbot. Uh, one of the reasons to do so is to, um, let's say, tackle all those care-related problems okay. which customers are having. So the problems that are usually... Mainly you know, are the problems, the one that mm -hmm. many companies are decided to uh, implement the chatbot. <clears throat> but to be able to, let's say, uh, to be able to fulfill the, the need for that, to uh, um, onboard our stakeholders and uh, budget owners, mm -hmm. uh, we decided actually to implement the chatbot in a totally different domain is sales. And the segment where we wanted to deploy is B2B, which was kind of an interesting, a bit risky. 
we wanted to prove that uh, having a chatbot in B2B segment can help increase sales in B2B segment. And uh, we have launched some small bot which we made by ourselves. Uh, we did that with one of the open platforms which exist here. And we managed to increase the inbound sales lead by 20%. Okay. And which that is was uh, green light yes, for exactly. the stakeholders to go further. Okay, so that's how you, know, uh, you ended up working with us? Yeah. So tell uh, us a bit about Tim, because uh, uh, I think reasons, he's working uh, with you, uh, um, not being said anything bad about uh, any other vendors with Absolutely. who we worked before. But uh, the vendor with who we worked before didn't have Romanian language as an option, but also didn't have the, let's say, the logic that is behind each and every chatbot. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess majority of the audience knows, but in case that it doesn't, chatbot learns. And uh, so chatbot- So it's not just frequently no, asked no, questions. No, 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 no. Actually, chatbot learns. And we needed a vendor who have experience in Romanian market with Romanian customers to actually help us build the chatbot much more successfully. Mm -hmm. uh, being said that, uh, you had quite a good reference. Uh, now I'm speaking as a client, but also I'm speaking as a user, since I was using, and I'm still using, chatbot of Regina Maria, which helps me a lot. I'm a foreigner and I'm hopeless with the call center, so for me, this is the only channel of communication. And you have been tackling banks. So one of the few main sectors in business industry in Romania, and uh, in terms of the market share subscriber base, which you are covering is quite huge. So this is the main decision why we decided to, to do this partnership with Druid, uh, which on the end actually fulfilled fully our needs also in terms of working. We have been able to, uh, since the kickoff of our uh, meeting, to launch Chatbot. I think we did it with three weeks. Which, which, which is, is quite fast. Quite fast, <laughs> which is amazingly fast. So you are also one of the vendors who are able to work in agile mode. Mm -hmm. So not to throw out the full scale fledge product on the market. You are throwing out the version zero, then we are learning based on our customers, and then we are constantly upgrading each and every two weeks. We are releasing new, new uh, features, new conversational flows, and we are onboarding more and more customers. The, the, you said something really interesting about learning, because I think it's a double uh, way, because not only the chatbot is learning, but actually us as users are oh, learning a lot. lot. We're learning how to actually use an, a chatbot, how to, let's say, you know, just get our problem really quickly solved. Um, and I think this is something that you can actually see the actual return on investment when you're talking about digital transformation through a chatbot. Exactly. One of the things in the beginning, and I must say, we have had around 4,000 users per day. 50% of them just chat. <laughs> they just wanted to chat. You know, people want to be heard. This is one of yeah. the things. And then... How funny are the stories? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they just want to be heard. Some of them, like, were gossiping others and so on and so forth. This is a funny sometimes to read, but what is going on now, uh, we have almost the same number of customers, but we are executing on their problems. So we are solving their problems. We have them engaged longer. And we actually train them in a way. They, they learn that by themselves. It's not that we train them. They learn them by themselves. The chatbot can actually use them to do something. Why? Is, what is the main reason why they are there. And uh, uh, the time which they are spending now, it's more or less the same, but the efficiency which we are getting, it's like double the tripled for the last uh, period of eight months, let's say. So, and you're seeing this efficiency and the, uh, you know, let's say, decreased number of users that are actually ended up in the call center and talking yes, with the call exactly. center agents. exactly. One of the options which we always need to leave, and let's mm -hmm. be honest, it's everywhere. People like talking on the we phone. We need to have an option that customer can talk yeah, to exactly. representatives. Especially and when you're mad, because I think that's <laughs> when you're actually... Uh, well, maybe in that case I would leave them chatbot <laughs> only, but uh, nevertheless, uh, the thing is we have that option, and that option was used much, much more in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Now we are seeing like almost 80% of the conversation is ending up 
on the chatbot. It doesn't go further to the call center representative. So yes, this has been decreased. And this is one of the reasons for digital transformation, is just to try to have an, that omni-channel approach when you're going to move your customer from one channel to another, trying to keep them on the digital channel as long as possible and try to keep them to do, let's call it self-care and self-provision by themselves. And we are just learning them how to do so. And yes, uh, efficiency is there. And how did you see this, you know, let's say uh, balance between the improvement of customer support and customer satisfaction and translation into sales? Because, you know, you said it's 80-20. So the chatbot is actually doing a lot of the customer care part. Actually, but uh, how mainly, is it? How yeah. is it looking? Because I know that mainly you were telling does me about the care uh, part. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, around let's say 4,000 customers per day, 80% mm -hmm. of them they are doing the care part. But one of the things what we left them, and this is something when they're satisfied, they would maybe try to do something more. And some of them, even though they haven't meant to enter into the chatbot to do any sales or to see what kind of uh, products we are offering or what kind of promotions which have, because we do uh, promote on, on chatbot, they are entering into those conversational flows as well. And some of them are ending up in our, our online basket. Okay, so it's a customer onboarding kind uh, in of, a way, yeah, so yeah. new leads. We are, new... Just, we are learning as well. Okay. We are learning what are the journeys who customer likes the most and uh, in majority of the cases, top care journey is how to pay invoice electronically and online. And top uh, sales journey is uh, abonamente nueva, if I said properly. So, so we are learning them to actually use it properly to help themselves and to fulfill their needs. How did the marketing campaign went when you actually launched them? I mean, because I know it's usually, you know, uh, uh, it's a bit of a change management that you're doing and we're doing with our customers when they're deploying a chatbot internally for their employees, because it's a bit of a shift, you know, it's taking you out a bit of the routine of actually picking up the phone and calling that colleague. How it was uh, for, uh, you know, for the we customers? We didn't do it at the first place okay. because we didn't want that our customers perceive chatbot as another marketing channel. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we see that customers are a little bit tired because we as a business, in general, telco business, a little bit aggressive on the market mm -hmm. and uh, a little bit uh, sometimes pushy. So uh, we think that we were able to onboard them priorly uh, with care. So knowing that there is something that we would do for them, solve some of their problems, and then as a back end is a marketing related, um, mainly education related mm -hmm. type of marketing, how to use some kind of a digital channels, how mm -hmm. to execute digital sales, how to pay online digital bill and things like that, and then going into the regular, either B2C or B2B products and services and market them, but kind of a back-ended, let's say, yeah, not that aggressive. Not that aggressive. So you are mentioning earlier that you're a customer of Regina Maria, so you're talking with the chatbot there. Uh, you're a customer of a bank, you're talking with the chatbot there. So how did this interaction, daily interaction that you're having with the virtual assistants actually uh, helped Tim get even you know, better in what he's doing? It does, because in the beginning, we were not uh, fully aware how many things can be solved with a chatbot. Chat. <laughs> this is like endless, really endless channel. Uh, just uh, to have an idea, we, in the beginning, we just left our customers chatting, and we were like, giving them idea, what would you like the chatbot help you with? And for example, this is how we figured out that I don't know, 50% of the customer have no idea how to pay online bill. So we ran the campaigns to, to do this, this type of education. Uh, having banking services and, uh, for example, health services, what we have learned that uh, sometimes of, let's call it self-provision type of action from the customers is something that we're going to deploy in the future. Mm -hmm. Meaning that we would allow our customers to I don't know, turn on or turn off the roaming service, for example, okay. or to straight from the change the package from one to another, or to straight from the chatbot buy something, go directly to the basket and buy something. So this is 
something that we didn't dare to start with. We want to just to onboard them. We want to keep them there. We want to have high level of engagement and satisfaction, and we needed to educate them. And the further steps is to get them deeper, more into the digital tools. This was actually my, my next question. How is the digital transformation looking in the future for telecom? Uh, get more digitally savvy customers, mm -hmm. meaning that they are able to use all the channels which we have regardless and sometimes not even paying attention. You know how Google is moving us from one On way to another, to another, not even knowing that we have been moved. Exactly. I'm not saying that we're going to go into the same <laughs> journey and path, but, but the idea is that customer does, you know. Customer on the end doesn't care mm -hmm. if this is like an app or this is a chatbot or this is that web or whatever. They would like to keep the journey without being stopped or without the need maybe. seamless. Yes, and exactly. omni-channel approach is something which is on a telecom agenda. So Tim, we can find him now on the website. Where we can find him you know, on the if uh, you're a customer of telecom, where else can I talk with him? Uh, he's also on uh, one of the instances on the website which is related to my account. Mm -hmm. So let's say app, which mm -hmm. we have, uh, they are desktop version. So again, we want to educate customers how to use it. And I think within a week, but let's be like safe side on, in June, uh, we're going to have team on uh, my account. This is the app, which is widely uh, uh, used. used in... Mm -hmm. In actually all Deutsche Telekom, it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I it's think a, it's going to be first chatbot in uh, uh, my account DT app. If yes. we launch that, it's going to be like a thumbs up. But uh, we would like to have chatbot on the app, and then we will go into the social media. Mm -hmm. So we talked a bit now about you know the importance of being uh, keeping our customers happy, yeah, and satisfied and cared for. Uh, what's the plan that Telecom has for their employees? I mean, is the chatbot something that you're looking for when it comes to the interaction with the employees? What What is the, uh, uh, the We have Anna. I don't know, by the way, why we decided that the male chatbot should, should be, be for, for the external client. customers yes. and the female chatbot for internal customers. But one fun fact, what I figured it out, majority of the chatbots are called by female girls. names. Yes. Yeah, girls. Uh, so we have Anna. Anna is internal chatbot. Uh, it helps uh, employees to use a lot of HR services by themselves, meaning they can do, they can go into the application which covers all HR related things like vacations, day off, uh, sick leave. Uh, benefits, uh, payrolls, all those kind of things. And now it's some of the things which were before done either on phone, phone calls or emails or going into the app and fill in some vacation request and then go through the procedure of approval. That can be done via chatbot seamlessly. Perfect. So that means that you're not only focusing on customers, but that employees as well. Yeah. And one of the things, uh, since I'm using Druid very frequently, uh, I have a dashboard and I have report access into the both okay. chatbots. One of the things what I was surprised to see high level of engagement between employees. Okay. This is something we were always complaining, we need to be more digital, so on and so forth, but we never saw that, you know, somebody wants to start that digitalization. But actually when we have it, it's used. And it's quite commonly used. So the change management happened uh, very uh, quickly. There is a role model, <laughs> yes. and then everybody is copying it. Yeah, exactly. That's good. That's good. That's a that's a great way to actually you know uh, uh, get a new tool into the the business, just to have like uh, let's say ambassadors. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And team was made kind of a huge success in couple of and once we used it, especially when it was some PR conference, pandemic related. Mm -hmm. So we post there a lot of data, facts, and figures for the newspapers who were, I don't know, participating. It was an online event. So team can be used in 24 hours for anything that is needed so and that we need sleep, to broadcast. Right? Yes. No, team doesn't no, sleep. 
no. And you are also one who are helping us doing it. So, <laughs> so uh, I was thinking because I don't know. I think we we'll, don't have a lot of uh, um, a lot of uh, time. So uh, thank you very much for actually having this conversation because it's really interesting to see, you know, how the customers are actually perceiving uh, all this. Um, and uh, we're looking forward. We'll keep uh, an eye on uh, what uh, digital transformation you'll have uh, in the future. Thank you, and thanks for supporting the digital transformation <laughs> and make it happen. <laughs>